Hello, my name is Matthew Randall, and welcome to this video tutorial on using Python within Nuke. Now, uh, I know many of you have never going to have used Python, uh, let alone write Python within Nuke. So, this isn't going to be a tutorial that's going to teach you the whole of Python. We'll introduce you to little bits, but we'll probably be focusing a bit more on actually using Python within Nuke. And then, uh, and then there's lots of resources on the internet to actually learn Python programming in a bit more detail. Okay, so let's take you through what we're going to try and do. In this tutorial. Um, what I've got here is um, uh, a cube, so it's just a very small image of a cube, okay? Uh, so I've got an image here of a cube that I'm basically compositing onto a, a blank background, a uh, blank background using a merge node, and then this transform node just allows me to kind of move this cube wherever I want, okay? Now, what I want to do is kind of create like a sort of a uh, uh, I suppose you could call it a feedback effect. What I want to do is duplicate that cube many, many times, um, uh, almost like a duplicate special in, in Maya, um, uh, and, and repeat it. So what I've done is I've created a Python script which produces a uh, group of nodes or a node group which does that for me. So let me just plug that in there and you can see what it's actually doing. Here we go. So here we are, it's just repeating this thing here, and it's sort of rotating it and doing a transform on it. Uh, and if I go into, and if I double click on the group for you, you can see that I can actually kind of edit the rotation. So I can change the rotation, I can change the, the, the spacing or the, the amount that uh, it's moved. If I actually put the rotation to zero for you, you'll probably see that a bit more clearly. I can change the, the amount of spacing in the Y axis and the Z axis between each copy and I can scale it, I can scale it up, I can scale it down um, uh, whatever I want to do okay so there's various sort of interesting effects that I can do with this sort of uh, um, uh, uh, with this with this group here okay now what's happening is if I uh, open up the group so I'm just going to press S here okay and this group was actually created using a script and that's the script that we're going to have a look at today okay if I press this S here so we can actually look inside the group that we created with our script. You can see basically it's a lot of repeating elements. It's just basically uh, uh, it's basically doing a transform and then merging the transform with itself, and then doing a transform and then merging the transform with itself. But you can see it's doing it multiple times. Okay, great. So let me just take you through that. If I just um, disconnect this group here. OK, and then I'm going to have a look at the script. Now, to get access to the script editor, what you want to do is just go right click in properties and go Windows. So just right click on this top bar in properties and go Windows, script editor. And this is the script that we're going to actually go through. OK, don't be daunted. I will talk you through all, all of it as we go through. But for the moment, I just want to run it so you can see what happens. OK, again, I'm just going to delete this group here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've got the whole thing selected. And then to run the script, we just press this icon here, okay? And it's going to ask me how many loops do I and how many copies do I want on here. I'm just going to put five in so you can actually see a bit more clearly what's going on, okay? And I'll go OK. And you can see it generates this group for us. And if I plug that in here, you'll see there's a group here with just five copies of that which is just generating f just five copies of this um, Rubik's Cube. I mean, obviously, I could apply this to a video as well as a still image. I've just done it as a still image at the moment. So if I open up the group here, again, I can just transform this. I can change how I transform that in the X and Y. I can edit the rotation uh, uh, and do what I want to do with it. And obviously, I've just got all I've done is duplicate this five times. In fact, you've got six copies there because uh, you've got the original one here and then obviously five copies. OK. So again, I'm just going to go into this group um, so we can see it in more detail. If I go S, so just so we can have a look at this in more detail, let's just uh, pull the these elements out a little bit so we can just kind of see what's happening here. So I've got my input coming in here. So my cube comes into here, and then what happens is it goes to a transform node. It's kind of like it feeds back on itself almost. It goes into a transform node. And I'm just going to arrange this a bit better for you. So it goes into a transform. One copy of it goes into a transform node and gets moved, you know, offset slightly. And then that copy gets merged with itself. So we end up with, you know, we end up with a uh, a duplicate, if that kind of makes sense. 
uh, merge with itself okay and again it's exactly the same process here after the merge we send the copy to a transform and offset it a little bit and then we send another copy to a merge node so they then merge that transform which is again with itself and you can see each time it goes through this loop it's basically creating an extra copy of uh, the cube okay so basically what we're doing is taking the cube offsetting offsetting one copy of the cube and then merging that with the original uh, with the original image offsetting a copy of the cube merging that with the original image and just doing that over and over and over again okay uh, and obviously what's great about um, using a script to do this is obviously we could do this manually but imagine you want to do this say a hundred five hundred times it would be very complicated the great thing about a script is we can use a script to just basically create this whole node structure for us and create these sliders here this interface that allows us to kind of adjust all these bits so when I'm adjusting the scaling what I'm actually doing is adjusting the um, uh, if I go into the transform here I'm actually adjusting the um, hopefully you can see this yeah, doo -doo -doo. yeah so if I adjust this spacing in X what I'm doing is adjusting the actual value in here so I'm actually adjusting this value here you can see that they're kind of connected okay and I'm actually when I run this when I'm moving this I'm adjusting the translate X value in every single transform node inside this group and again same with the Y same with the rotate and same with the scale so this slider allows us to actually uniformly affect every single transform that's inside this this group okay so hopefully that's kind of give you an idea of what we're trying to do in our script I'm going to uh, delete this and we will talk you and, and go through through it from the start so let's start off by um, creating uh, this this sort of initial structure of nodes here this this repeating group of nodes here okay so first thing we want to do is we want to define the number of um, uh, the number of repeats that we're going to do okay so we need to create something called a variable okay again so if, if you go look into Python to a bit more detail this will make a bit this will make sense but a variable is simply uh, a container we can give this container any name we want as long as we don't start with um, as long as we don't start with a number and the name can't have a space so it can't start with a number and it can't start with a space as long as we follow those rules we can name this container whatever we want and we can put a value inside that container so I'm gonna go num repeats okay again I could call this container anything I want okay and I'm just going to go equals and I'm just going to put an arbitrary value in there so I'm just going to say the number of repeats equals 10 so I've got a container which knows how many repeating loops that we want to put in there okay now ultimately we're going to make this so that the user can actually configure this themselves but to start with we'll just put in we'll actually hard set a value in there we'll actually put a set of a value within this script ourselves for the moment okay so that's a variable and uh, this number is what we call a whole number and in computing it's called an integer so that's a useful thing to know that that is an integer and often when you're dealing with uh, different parameters um, uh, quite often your um, uh, it, it's useful to know the type of uh, value that that parameter takes so does it take a whole number an integer or does it take a number with a decimal place ie a float and it's quite useful to actually know that in advance uh, when you're actually doing your programming okay and hopefully you'll see examples of that as we go through okay then what we want to do is you'll notice that um, uh, one of the first things we've got here is this dot node because obviously we've got one input coming in here but we've got this dot node here that allows us then to actually um, connect our trans our first transform and merge nodes to this dot to that dot node so the first thing we want to do is actually create this dot node so how do we create a node okay so again what we need to do is we're going to have a variable which will basically contain this node and again we could call this variable anything we want okay so I'm gonna go n dot okay and the naming convention for this is that the n basically signifies that this variable is a node and in fact I'm gonna change this to um, uh, to I okay so that I denotes that this variable is an integer okay it's useful to do that so you know what type of variable is what okay so I'm gonna go n dot 
okay so say that this is a it's a node and I've called the node uh, dot okay uh, because it's a dot node okay and then I'm going to go uh, 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 nuke dot uh, nodes okay so this nuke dot node so when we're going nuke now what I'm doing in Python is I'm actually um, I'm actually accessing all of the um, uh, when I go nuke what I'm doing is I'm accessing all of the nuke functionality so this is this is not functionality that is available to the Python programming language by default all this functionality is available to nuke because we're scripting within nuke so when I go nuke I'm now I'm now going into all the sort of special functionality of nuke okay and I'm going to go nuke dot nodes and I'm going to pick out the class of node that I want now this is a very useful tip in order to sort of work out so uh, what class of node I want to add okay uh, a good tip is if I click on a node so I'm going to click on the dot node and if I press I it comes up with a load of information about that node, which is very useful. Okay, uh, let me just scroll this down. Okay, and um, one of the things, in fact, there's not any more information there for us to use. But um, one of the useful things is this class here. Okay, this tells us what class this object is. So, class is basically uh, a class is basically a type of object, and an not and, and an object has a load of parameters. So they're basically kind of variables that we can change, containers with information that we can change. We can either read it uh, or we can edit it. And they also, and classes also have functionality. They have commands that we can run to do certain things as well. Okay. And you'll see us do that as we go through this program. Okay. So classes are basically types of objects that have both um, uh, parameters we can edit. Okay. Uh, and uh, functions that we can run. Okay, um, and the important thing is what we're doing is this class is almost like it's like a template that has all that functionality. And what happens is we want to basically create an instance of that class. We want to create a, a copy uh, of all the functionality based on what's in that class and put it into our um, and put it into our scene. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go nodes and we're just going to go dot. And that's saying what we want to do is we want to create a node of the dot class okay and then um, uh, and then I'm just gonna go uh, uh, open close brackets okay and then um, yeah open close brackets okay uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run this so you can actually see what it does so I'm just gonna go close and let's go back to our main graph here so I'm just gonna run this script Okay, and you can see here it's created the dot node. I'll, I'll run it again just in case you missed that. Okay, so you'll see, bang, it's created this dot node for us. Okay, and that dot node is called n dot. So we know it's called n dot, and that's useful because I want to connect future nodes to that as we go on. Okay, so that's how we create it. We go nuke dot nodes to create to create a um, a node of our choice. I go nuke dot nodes and then enter the class and I can get that class information by highlighting any uh, uh, node that I want to actually put into my um, uh, that I want to actually put in uh, create in my script and just go I and you can access the class information so for example with this transform we've got a reasonable amount going on in there okay but the key bit is this class bit I know that this is called class this is called that the class is called transform okay Wonderful. Right. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Um, what I want to do is actually create a loop now to go and create all these merge and transform nodes that we see in here. Okay. Uh, and and it's going to loop as many times as I put it as as I've identified in this repeat variable here. I repeats variable uh, here. Okay. So with that in mind. Let me just sort of talk you through uh, uh, the process that we want to go through. So, when we connect this, what we want is we want the first two nodes to connect to the this input node, and then what we want is the second. So the first transform merge node are going to connect to this input. 
And then what we want is the second merge, and then, so that's the first loop that we do. And then what we want to do is in the second loop we do, okay, is we want to, I'm just going to move this sort of out of the way so we can see things a bit more clearly. In the second loop that we do, and all subsequent loops, I want to connect this to the previous, to the merge that was created in the previous loop. Okay, so just to repeat that again, in the first loop we want to connect the transform and the merge nodes to this to this dot. In the in the second loop and the, and all subsequent loops, I want to connect the transform and merge nodes to the merge node that was created in the previous loop. Okay, so the key thing is when we do our loops, I actually want our um, uh, I want the operation that's performed during the loop to be slightly different in our first loop than it is to the subsequent loops. Okay. Now in order to do that I need to create a variable, so I'm going to create another variable up here that identifies if we're on the first loop. Okay. So I'm going to create a, a variable called, um, uh, I'm going to call it B because it's going to be a boolean variable. Okay. And a boolean variable simply can contain two values, either true or false. Okay. Um, and I'll call it first loop. Okay, and I'm going to go equals true. Now, the key thing is that Python is case sensitive. So if I go true like that, that's not a Boolean variable. Okay, that's just uh, uh, that's that's that will actually try and look for a variable called true and put the value of that into here. Copy the value of that and put it into here. Okay, so it, it, it's working in a different way. All right. Okay. Um, and obviously that will cause an error because there is no variable called true at the moment. Okay, we haven't created that. So that will cause an error. So if I go true here, you can see it's highlighted in pink here to say that this is a key word. Okay, this is, this is, you, know, you can't use this word as a variable. Okay, because it's keywords reserved for other uses. Uh, and it's kind of confirming I know what you mean here. Okay. Um, the other thing to be aware is, aware is that these variables are not what we call strong typed and by what I mean by that is I I I don't have to just because I have put B here that's just my naming convention I don't have to put a boolean in here I could put whatever value I want in there and even though I've put a boolean in there now I could if I wanted to put a uh, a different I could put a number in there later or I could put a node in there later uh, I could put different things in there so these are type dependent and and uh, that is a you know that is something that does exist in other programming languages but because of the way that Python works um, um, it's not type dependent okay so you can get away with just um, so you can do that I would suggest you don't want to do that, that you do want to actually kind of put a naming convention in here and, and that, that, that when you use your variables, you do want to use them for a type of variable. Changing the types of variable as you go through uh, can cause problems. Maybe not so much changing between, say, an integer and a float, but certainly if you're changing, say, from a Boolean to a number or from a, a, from a, a, a string of letters or characters, uh, um, i.e. text, um, uh, to a number or something like that, that's not very good programming convention. So you want to be quite structured. So even though Python allows you to get away with things, you do want to be quite quite structured. The other thing that's actually worth pointing out as well is that Python is uh, what we call uh, uh, it's called a scripting language, and um, uh, the main reason it's called a scripting language is because because unlike a, a formal programming language. Um, you don't have to compile the script. We can just literally run the script and then nuke. Nuke will just uh, um, nuke will literally run the script for us. Okay, so it will interpret. You know, effectively, we're, what we're doing is we're giving all these commands, and nuke will just interpret these commands for us. Okay. Now, quite often with other programming languages like C, for example, you need to go into a programming, a formal programming environment. And you can program this in a program environment. There are Python programming environments that you can use, but we're just going to use the scripting environment that's in Nuke to do this. Okay. But quite often with something like C, you have to compile it first. So you'll actually compile that program, say, into an executable or some kind of plugin or something like that. And then you actually either you know load the plugin or run the executable in order to run it. Okay. Whereas you don't have to go through that process with this with, with Python. Python is just directly interpreted. So you literally just get the program itself just to run these commands uh, and, it, and it, it will do it. So you don't need to compile it. Okay. Um, great, so we've identified that that's our first loop. Now what we want to do is actually start um, uh, um, 
uh, yeah, start doing our actual loop. Okay, so to create a for uh, a loop, we do we go for. Hang on, sorry, let me just talk you through this. For, okay, uh, I in range, and it was I repeats. Okay. Okay, so what we're doing here is I'm just going to go, I'm going for basically means we're going to create something called a for loop. And you can read up on more information about for loops and Python. Uh, there's loads of information on the internet again. Again, if Google for and Python, you'll come up with lots of different resources that you can come up with. Python is, is, is a well-established language. Uh, there's great books on it. Um, um, and you won't struggle to get resources to teach you how to do Python. The bit that you will struggle to find resources for are the actual nuke commands that we're running. So, so it's more this sort of stuff here, these nuke specific commands that we're running, where we're actually calling the nuke functionality from within Python. Okay. Now we're doing a for loop. Now what's happening is we're going to create a variable called i, and i is simply a uh, uh, it's an integer, it's, 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 you could call it a counter, it's an integer that's going to increment as we go through the loops, okay? Um, and what we're going to do is we're looping with the range i repeats, okay? So what this means is we're going to loop 10 times and each loop i is going to, um, uh, with each loop i is going to increment uh, one. So in the first loop, I will equal, um, uh, uh, I think it will equal one or zero. I think it'll equal zero. In the next loop, it will equal, um, it will equal, um, sorry, it will equal one. In the next loop, it will equal two, etc., etc. So I act as an index to tell us which loop we're on. Okay, and that's quite an important thing, uh, uh, a thing for us uh, when we're actually trying to kind of uh, perhaps name our uh, to name our um, uh, nodes uh, and keep things ordered. Okay. Okay. So just to demonstrate this for loop, what I've done is I've just put this print. So I'm just going to print i. Just put this print i command. Okay. And what happens is print just basically prints stuff to the output window. So this is really useful for testing bits of code as we're going on. So we can kind of go, okay, are we on the right track? Is this working? When I write code, I tend to do stuff incrementally. I write a bit of functionality test that functionality, make sure that's working, then move on to the next bit of functionality. Kind of what we're doing here, we're kind of writing a little bit, testing that, then moving on to the next bit, okay? So in order to run this for loop, what I want to do is I don't want to create, I, I want to basically, um, uh, uh, I don't want to create another, I don't want to create a dot this time. So what I'm going to do is put a hash there. And what this hash does is it comments things out, okay? And actually putting comments in your code is a really useful thing to do, okay? So, so for example, I could put a comment in here and goes hash uh, loops to create each copy, okay? Something like that. So I can put a comment in here so that you can understand your code. So I'd very much encourage you, once you go through this, to actually comment up your code so that you understand what, what it's doing, okay, and use comments, okay, and you can do hashes there. You can even actually just put, um, uh, you can go kind of like a double uh, line like that, uh, in fact, sorry, no, you can't, don't do, a, don't do a double line, just do a hash. You can do a hash like that on a line and just go, you know, this is the print, Okay, and that will also be treated as a um, as a comment as well. Okay, so you can put comments in there as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I just want to run this just to demonstrate that this is a loop. Okay, so if I run this, okay, and can you see that in the output window it's outputted uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you can see that this i is increasing every time that we do a loop. Okay, so. Part of programming is A, we have variables for keeping track of bits of information, and B, we have um, uh, we have uh, loops or what we call logical control structures. So we've got if statements, which you'll see in a moment, and loops, which allow us to um, actually control the logic of our code as well. Okay, so. Uh, we know that that works and we're happy with that. So I'm going to bring in, I'm going to uncomment this so that this is work uh, back into our code again. So un uncomment the end dot. 
I'm just going to remove this because sometimes comments can get a bit confusing when you're doing things as well. Now, the key thing is as well is that um, um, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a whole series of commands in here, okay, that we want to do every single loop, okay? And one of the key things is this idea of blocks of code. So we might have a block of code that we run that's within the for loop that we repeat every time there's a loop. There might be a block of code that's in an if statement that we ran if a certain condition is true. And you'll see that in a moment, okay? To start a block of code, you use this um, uh, this, this uh, colon here, okay? So that means that we're going to start a block of code. That means every subsequent line is actually part of this for loop. We tell Python that something that, that something's no longer part of that for loop literally by unindenting the code. So if I go and if I go and go go print um uh, I'm gonna put in a string now, this is the end. Okay. Now if I run this again, I get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then I get this is the end. So remote re keep in mind it hasn't repeated this is in this is the end because this is if this is being unindented okay if i put another print command in here print and i'll go still in the loop okay and let's run that okay so you can see it's going because both these lines are indented. These are both part of the for loop. These are both going to be repeated. So it's going to go print. Uh, it's going to go uh, print zero, then still in the loop, then one, then still in the loop, then two, then still in the loop, and repeat this process until it goes to, and then and then obviously we drop out of the loop at this point, and then we're printing. This is at the this is the end. So. Anywhere where we're doing either an if statement or a loop or, 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 or other types of blocks of code, perhaps a function, which we're not going to do in this uh, demonstration, uh, uh, this idea of a block is a very important thing to understand, that, that, that within Python, uh, you end a block by unindenting, okay? And you start a block by doing this colon, okay? It's very important to understand that, okay, uh, in order to... Um, uh, 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 in order to write your code. Okay, so let's get back to what we want to do with this script now that we've explored that concept. Okay, so okay, so what I want to do is I want to create the transform and merge node. That's the first thing I want to do in this for loop. So I'm going to go exactly the same process I did before. I'm going to go nuke dot nodes. Okay, dot and remember it was called transform. That's what the, the, the node was called. It was called transform. And again, I'm going to go in here. And what I want to do is I want to set the name of that transform, okay? Give that transform a unique name, okay? So I'm going to go name equals um, uh, uh, and I'm just going to go um, I'm going to go T plus, okay, S-T-R-I, okay, and let me just talk you through what I'm doing here, so obviously what we're doing is we, we're giving this this a name so that so when you go into the properties of this transform, you'll see it'll have the name, it'll, it'll be given the name that we've given it, I've called it just, I've just given it, I've called it T, I could call it transform, I could call it whatever I wanted to do, but I just I just thought I'd call it T, and then whatever the number of the loop is, okay? Now what's happening is this plus is not adding a number to the to, to T, because you can't add a number to T, that doesn't make sense, okay? What this plus is actually doing is something called concatenation. So what it's actually doing is putting two pieces of uh, text together, okay? So... If I just go and if I would if I was just to go um, plus I, I'd get an error because what I'm trying to do is add. It would literally interpret this because I've got a number here because I is a number. Okay, because I've got a number there, it would be going. Okay, well I'm going to try and add ten to t, and that doesn't even make any sense. Okay. Whereas if I convert this number into a string, so that's why I'm going str. Okay, string. So this is a function. And notice the convention of what we do. We run a function. We open brackets. Ooh. Often we run a function. Um, often what we do is we, yeah, we run a function. 
there's two main types of thing in, it, when you when you're doing programming. There's too many too many types of things: a variable or a parameter, and then a function. Okay, so a variable or a parameter is simply a value that we're accessing either to put to edit it or to read it. Okay, a function is basically a command. It's a set of commands, just like this. Okay, a set of functionality that we want to run. Okay, so in order to create a node, for example, we need to run this transform function. What we're doing is actually calling what we call the constructor of the transform class in order to actually make a new transform node for us. Okay, that's not the important thing. What we're doing is the key thing is we're running a function. And whenever we run a function, what we need to do is we need to go open brackets, close brackets. Okay, that tells the computer. So, for example, by going here, just need to close those brackets, open brackets, close brackets. That tells the computer that this is a function, not a parameter. Okay. Now what we've done here is is in this function we can actually set up various parameters of our node when we when we initially create it. So one of those parameters is the, is the is the name t is is the name. Here we have another function called str. And what str does is takes any variable, okay, in this case it's the variable i, takes any variable and converts it into a string for us. So by converting this into a string, what we're doing is adding the string 10. So basically the number 10 is this, and the string 10 is this. And that may look very subtly different, but what you have to realize is that computers have, they're very stupid computers. They have no sense of ambiguity, okay? So what you have to do is sort of tell the computer that that this that this isn't the, this is the number 10, and then this is the string, i.e. a set of a, a, a set of characters or some text with, with, you know, a one and a zero, okay? To the computer, these are two completely different things. So, um, uh, so if I go string, uh, so what I'm doing is just basically converting this integer into a uh, into a string, so that when we run this plus, it doesn't get interpreted as an add, but gets interpreted as a concatenation because it's got two pieces of text either side of it. It goes well. Obviously, I'm not adding. In this case, I'm actually concatenating. I'm actually joining these two pieces of text together. So that's what I will do in this case. Okay. So what we'll end up with is naming these transforms T. Each transform will be named T with a number. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to set another uh, parameter as well because what I don't want to do is is by default the transform in the X and Y, i.e. the amount that this image that we're putting in here is offset is uh, zero and obviously if we offset it by zero it's just putting the copy over the exact top of it we're not going to see the copies so i want to actually do some kind of transform so we can actually see it moving and see a copy happening okay so i'm going to go uh i'm going to set up another uh parameter or uh, uh do another uh yeah as uh, edit another parameter within our transform node called translate okay now again if i go into my transform node and just press i you can see in here that here's our class, so we know what we need to call the class, and then if we scroll down, you can actually see all the parameters, okay? And you can see here we have the translate parameter, okay? And it's got two numbers associated with it, okay? Because obviously we can translate in the X and Y, so we do X first, then Y. So here I'm going to do translate, and then I'm going to give that the value um, uh, 20, just to move this across, give ourselves a bit more space so we can see what's happening. 20, 20, oh, hang on, typing somewhere else now, 20, 20, okay, uh, and in fact, sorry, I need to surround this in commas here, okay, and notice how each parameter that I'm feeding in here, so this is the name of the parameter, and that's the value I want to set it to, this is the name of the parameter, this is the value I want to set it to, each pair of name values is separated by a comma, and I could go through and set all of these up, okay, and give them values if I wanted to, uh, so that, that we can then, you know, set up what we want in our node, okay. So this will do for what we want at this point, okay? And then what I want to do is I want to create a uh, merge node, okay? Now the key thing is, uh, again, I'm just going to go and onto my merge node and press I. And if I look at the class, you'll see, and this is why it's wor worth looking at this, because you kind of go, oh, the class is bound to be called merge. Well, 
No, uh, Nuke's catching you out here. There's actually an old merge and a new merge. They work slightly differently. Uh, the old one, I I think my understanding is that's been deprecated. So this is the merge node that we use and understand when we're doing merges on our um, uh, in our uh, in Nuke in our node graph. Okay, so this is called merge two. So actually, what I want to do is I want to go Nuke dot nodes dot merge two. Okay, and um, I'm going to go uh, name um, equals, and so I'm going to do the same sort of convention. Um, I will just go uh, equals uh, m, okay, for merge, str i. Okay, you don't have to call it this. I that's that's just what I happen to have called it, and I, obviously I need to put that on there as well. Okay, uh, str i. I think. That's all I need to do for that. Yes. So I don't need to set up any other parameters. Um, so I'm just going to close that. Okay. So obviously you need to open and close each set of brackets. Hopefully you've kind of spotted that so far. Next thing I want to do is I want, uh, so if I go back into my group, let's have a look at our group here. What I want is I want the, um, uh, I want to set the input of this merge node to be this transform node here okay and now one of the things I've done is um, what I haven't done is create a, I've created these I've created these nodes but what I haven't done is set up a variable within which to store that node okay uh, and actually what's happening is I'm not storing the node in there I'm really just storing a link to that node that's an important distinction to, to make to, 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 to make when we're doing a when we're putting 10 into a variable like this that's actually putting the number 10 into that variable. When we actually go, you know, n dot equals a node like this, what we're actually doing is this, all we're doing is we're not actually putting the value. This node isn't actually stored in n dot. It's just a link to that node is stored in n dot. So whenever I refer to n dot, I'm referring to this node. Now, what we want to do is be able to refer back to these later in our code. So I want to create some variables for that as well. So I'm going to go n trans for transform node equals nuke dot nodes blah 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 and then I'm gonna go n merge equals so what, what I'm doing is basically putting uh, uh, I'm actually storing pointers to these nodes that we're creating in these variables okay these will get rewritten every single loop but that's not a problem because I only need to point to the nodes that I've just created now what this allows me to do is I can then go to um, uh, um, I can then go to uh, m sorry n merge so n's for just for node to say that this variable is pointing to a node I can then go n merge dot set um, input okay so I'm actually running a function now so I'm actually running a command on this. Uh, on this uh, uh, object and what I want to do is I want to set input so I want the transform I want this transform to go into the leftmost input okay now this is a bit of an odd convention but basically the inputs are indexed from right to left okay I know that doesn't make sense you expect things to be left to right so it indexes them from right to left starting at zero so basically if I take a sort of standard merge node as it is, B will be is input zero because that's the rightmost input, and A is input one. Okay, so it goes from zero one. All right. Okay. So with that in mind, let's go back to our script. Okay. So I want B. So remember, B is one, A is zero. Okay, because it always. Ah, um, oh, hang on a moment. Let me just. Have I got that right in my mind. Sorry, I'm going to start again. B is 0 and A is 1 because it indexes it from right to left. So you go A, okay? And remember, it's very important that this transform goes on the A input and that this original goes on the B input because remember, I'm, transla I'm translating this, making a copy and then putting it and then compositing it back into itself using a merge node, okay? So uh, making a copy, moving it, and then, and then, and then. And then, uh, uh, and then compositing that back into itself using the merge node. So using an A over B comp. So the copy is going to be A over the original, which is B. Okay. 
So here I'm going to I want to connect this merge node to the transform. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Um, okay. So I want to connect. So it's zero one. I want to connect input one. Okay. To and it doesn't matter how many inputs you have. You just obviously they're just indexed from right to left. Zero, however many. Okay. Zero starting at zero. Okay, uh, that's the thing to be aware of. Hopefully you've picked this up. Computers index things typically from zero. Okay, so that's just a, a, a useful thing to understand. I think the only oddity in Python is that when you when it indexes strings of characters, or uh, yeah, we're trying to look at particular strings in characters, that's indexed from one. But we're not going to be doing that in this particular demonstration, so you don't need to worry about that. But just be aware that computers often index things starting at zero rather than one. Okay. So then what I want to do is link that to the n trans node. Okay, so I'm saying I want input one to be linked to the n trans node. Okay. So this bit's going to be the same for every single loop. But now we get into things going a little bit differently because obviously this B is going to connect to the dot. Okay. Uh, in the first loop. And then subsequently it's going to connect to the previous merge. Okay. So what we want to do is we now need to put an if statement. OK, so and notice how I'm kind of sort of spacing things out, I'm putting spaces between bits just to kind of in the, you know, you can put line spaces in. It's very useful to do that just to kind of indicate sort of blocks of code doing different bits of functionality. OK, great. Now what I want to do is uh, I'm going to put an if statement. So I'm going to go if uh, the uh, first loop, OK, uh, equals uh, false, okay. Um, in fact, uh, sorry. If I go B, if uh, yeah, sorry B, uh, first loop, okay. And now what I'm doing is I'm doing something called an if statement. So literally, what I'm doing is I'm saying right, if B first loop equals true, okay. So if this happens to equal true. OK, so it got the, if it's got the value true in there, I want you to do the following functionality. Now, normally what we would do with an if loop is we would test the condition. So I would go like, you know, if a is greater than B, OK, I'd be testing a condition, something like that. And so, uh, you know, if, if the value in variable A is greater than the variable B, then we do then we'll do this block of code. OK, in this case, what we're doing is is uh, and, and and that condition I'll just go back a bit. That condition itself here would resolve to true or false depending on whether a uh, whether b is greater or less than a. Okay. Um, in this case, we're literally just testing the variable b firstly because that itself is equal to true or false. So that's how that's what we're doing. So if it's true, we're going to do this block of code. Okay. And what we're going to do is set because we only want we only want this to to run this block of code on the first loop once. So what we need to do is we need to go um, uh, b first loop okay equals false. So we want to go okay this this so what we want to do is set this value to false so that next time we go through this loop it doesn't run this if statement. Okay so that's the first thing we need to do. Okay now one of my frustrations with this this uh, script editor is that when I go enter here it doesn't actually automatically figure out that I'm working in a block of code and put my and put my uh, comma there. So I'm constantly having to tab in. Yeah, you'll notice to to keep my indents right. Otherwise uh, the logic of, of of you know my blocks of code and where things are being ran will will get confused and uh, and the program won't run in the right way. That's just one of my frustrations with this with this script editor. But there are better script editors available uh, that you could use uh, and I'm sure there's some stuff online about how to use those if you want to. Okay next thing I want to do is I want to connect both the this transform and this merge to the dot. Okay so I'm going to go um, uh, n trans. Okay again I'm just going to use the set input command. Okay and I'm going to set input 0 okay to um, uh, our dot that we created up here, end dot. Excellent. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to go um, n merge dot set input zero. 
and again it's going to go to end dot okay so we as I said in the first loop we want to connect these two to the dot okay and that's what we're doing then we want to do what we want to do is write something called an else so what's going to happen it, when we hit this if statement and b first loop is actually equal false okay what do we want to happen so we put that inside this else block okay again I need to put a colon here to make it a block of code okay so in this case what we're going to do is actually um, uh, we're actually going to um, uh, do the same thing so I'm literally going to copy these two lines of code so we're going to connect the end trans so you're going to connect the translation and merge node that we've just created but rather than connect it to end dot I'm going to connect it to a um, uh, I'm going to connect it to um, uh, a uh, to a, a node that I'm going to call prev merge okay I haven't created this node yet okay but I'm going to call this node prev merge okay and what this will be is the node that we created in the previous loop okay great um, great okay so then what I want to do is outside of this if statement so after I've done this if statement so so I want to do it inside the for loop but outside of this if statement okay I want to go um, n prev merge so hopefully you can understand the logic of what I'm doing here. N prev merge equals um, N merge. Okay. Oh, don't need to put a colon there. Okay. Equals N merge. Okay. So basically, what we're saying is we're 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 what we're going to do is we go through the first loop. Okay. And then what will happen is when we go through the first loop, it will link it to dot. And then what it will do is save. It will put. Uh, um, it will put the link that we've got to our n merge node and actually put that into our n pre -merge, pre merge node. So next time we go through the loop, we create our trans and n merge. We end up writing over the n merge node. Okay, all right. Running this if uh, running this else statement. Okay, and actually connecting it with the node and then connecting it with the node that we created in the previous loop. And then obviously after we've done that, we then write over n pre-merge pre node ready for the next loop. So you can see how we're anticipating the logic of what we're doing, we're anticipating the next loop. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to our main graph here. Okay, and we should be in a position now to run this code. Hopefully I haven't got any errors in there. Click, okay, that's brilliant. Okay, we haven't got any errors. And you can see that by running this code, it's generated. It hasn't put it in a group yet. That's a. Uh, uh, we'll move on to that. Okay. But you'll see that it's generated all of those bits for us. And if we wanted to, we don't have to put it in a group. We could just literally plug this in now and use it. So uh, let me just demonstrate that. I'm just going to move this across. Uh, okay. So let's just take that out there. And I'm going to go and put this transfer node to there. Great. And then I'm going to I'm going to try and grab this and go over here. This is a bit clunky, but let's try that and go over to this merge node here. And you can see there we are. Great. And all these bits are copying and obviously moving it 20, 20 in the x and y axis, hence moving this upwards here. Okay. So you can see that this copy is working. And you can see if I go into each, you can see how the naming convention has worked here that we were doing. Okay. So it's called M0, M1, M2 after each loop that we're doing. So it just gives them a unique name. Um, I'm not sure there was strictly a need to do that, but it does allow me to kind of demonstrate that sort of part of logic that we can use. And it is a useful thing to be able to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video here uh, and, and then continue on the next video to show you how to kind of put this into a group uh, and add those uh, sliders.